Tina has designed and produced hundreds of print books and ebooks for book publishers, museums, and self published authors. She's also worked with publishers of art books since 1993, and she'll be discussing the craft of creating art ebooks with us today. So please welcome Tina Henderson. <laughs> So uh, Jordan said part of what I was just going to say. <laughs> um, but first, here's my obligatory book picture, <laughs> picture of books. There will be more. Um, first of all, this is my first presentation. And so I went online to research how to give great presentations. And the first thing I found out was don't tell them that it's your first presentation. <laughs> but it is. And I also have bronchitis. But that's fine. <laughs> Those are my weaknesses. Art books are my strengths. So uh, we'll just talk about that. Um, I have been working with art books since 1993. Um, I started doing freelance typesetting with Harry Abrams. Um, at that time, they were known as one of the premier art book publishers in the world. Um, they are the publishers of Janssen's History of Art, which is a almost 1,000 page classic art textbook, um, among many other beautiful and important art books. And now, they are mostly known for Wimpy Kid. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. but. Um, I work with art books and not children's books, although some children's books are definitely art books. Um, so over the past 20 years, I've uh, moved on to working with other art book publishers, museum publication departments, and art book design studios. Um, so why should we be talking about art books specifically? Well, there are um, a lot of pundits online talking and writing about the future of publishing, but um, you know, they say publishers should do this and publishers should stop, should stop doing that. But the fact is that there are many different types of publishing, and I think we can all agree with that. What works for one type of publishing is not necessarily going to work for another type. Um, art books, particularly scholarly art books, which is uh, what I'll talk most about, um, are very complex in content and in layout. And so while EPUB may be the best choice for fiction, um, it's not necessarily the best choice for complex art books. So what is an art book? What is art? <laughs> art is hard to define. There are a million definitions of art. I don't actually have one myself. I agree with a lot of them and disagree with many of them. Um, but an art book could be almost anything. Some examples are books of photography, artist books, graphic novels, art textbooks, some children's books. Um, and the two that I work most on are exhibition catalogs and catalogs raisonnés, and I will explain what those are. <laughs> exhibition catalogs, you probably know, um, they document all the artworks included in a museum exhibition. This, for example, um, is a catalog for a recent exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York on ancient Korean artifacts. Um, as you can see from these pages, there are certain images that are purposefully laid out on the same page or the same spread. The text here discusses an elaborately decorated dagger sheath. Uh, we have an x-ray and a diagram of the sheath on the left, and two photos on the right of the upper portion of the decorated sheath. And this is a catalog raisonné. Um, catalog catalogs raisonnés attempt to collect all of the artworks or specific type of artwork, such as sculpture, by a particular artist, sometimes within a specific time frame. For example, this is the three-volume Robert Motherwell catalog raisonné, only on his paintings and sculpture, I mean paintings and collages. Um, he was a printmaker, but those prints are not included, and only for the period 1941 to 1991. This is an interior spread. As you can see, each piece of art is shown along with lots of information about it. Um, the title, the year created, in the inscriptions, dimensions, materials used, the provenance. Um, so what do art book publishers want? Um, in print, they want the highest quality image reproduction that they can get. They want the highest quality typography, writing, editing, paper, printing basically the highest quality of everything. Um, we sometimes go through 12 to 15 rounds of corrections. We do last minute image substitutions um, and designers and editors many times are flown on uh, to the printer to do press checks in Italy or wherever the book is being printed. So they're pretty serious about trying to make the best, most beautiful books that they can. What do our book publishers want out of digital? 
the same thing. They want the highest quality that they can get. And that's why the iPad, particularly the Retina iPad, is very appealing to them, and the Kindle, not so much. Um, they're generally willing to give up wider distribution in exchange for what they consider to be higher quality. So what are art book publishers doing and what have they been doing as far as digital publishing goes? Um, they've been experimenting and researching in that order. Um, art ebooks in different formats were kind of thrown out there to see what stuck. Uh, there was a lot of fixed layout, most, which, most of which didn't turn out so great. There were some DPS apps, uh, some of which were rejected by Apple, and there were a few multi-touch iBooks. And then um, last year, I believe it was, there were a couple of grants that were given to Getty and to um, Yale University Press to do research into what art buyers actually want out of a digital book. So I'm looking forward to hearing what people actually want. Um, in addition, a number of museums have created digital labs to do experiments in-house. With the museums, um, there's sort of this divide between the publications departments, which were always responsible for creating books, and the digital media departments, which were created, uh, which were responsible for creating the website. And so these digital media labs give the opportunity for these two departments to work together on digital projects, which is a great idea. Okay, some formats and tools. Um, first, I'm not going to talk about Amazon. <laughs> But what I mean by that is, uh, when I say reflowable EPUB, I also mean Mobi. And when I say fixed layout, I'm also talking about KF8 fixed layout. Um, and I'm also going to talk about some formats that you may not consider to be ebooks. For example, this um, is a website an ebook. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But is this a book? This is a three volume box set, but it's also kind of a book. But trying to contain all of this information in one ebook or even a dozen ebooks would be rather difficult. Um, there's actually a, also a, um, well, let me back up a little bit. Earlier I said that, cat or I hope I said, Catalogues Raisonnés attempt to collect all of the artwork by a certain artist. But there's a, a not funny running joke that um, the minute a catalog raisonné goes to press, it's outdated because. Um, Invariably, an un previously unknown piece of art will pop up somewhere. So a website being easily updatable is a great solution to that problem. So some museums and artists' foundations are creating their own catalog raisonné websites, such as this one from the Isama Noguchi Foundation. Um, there's also a company called Artifacts Press that is dedicated to creating online catalogs raisonnés. They've done Chuck Close paintings and Jim Dine sculpture so far, and they have a number of other ones in the works. And this is very beautifully, these are very beautifully put together. You can get a free account. You can just go to artifactspress.com and sign up for a, what they call a limited time access account. But um, I've had one for a year, and I've never had any trouble getting in. And this is OSCE, which is the Getty Foundation's online scholarly catalog initiative. Um, a number of museums participate in this effort to have their collections and information about the collections freely available online. This one I'm showing is from LACMA, um, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, their Southeast Asian art catalog. It has full text and footnotes and zoomable images and all kinds of really great stuff. Um, but you really need to be working at a museum to be able to access or to be able to get involved in the production of these kinds of, of um, books. <laughs> uh, so a custom app. This is probably the most expensive option for creating an ebook, um, an art ebook. So there aren't too many of them out there that I know of, and you need lots of time and money to do it. Um, but it's a good option if you've got the time and money. The most intriguing one I've seen recently is Joseph Albers' Interaction of Color. Um, this is a well-known 50-year-old textbook by the artist Joseph Albers on color perception. It contains the entire text of the book plus two hours of video and a whole bunch of interactive color plates. And yes, they still call them plates, even though this is not a printed book. But um, it's really well done. And uh, it's for a special occasion, the 50th anniversary of this text. So I think it was a fantastic idea. OK, a DPS app. What I mean by that is, um, any one-off book app created using Adobe's digital publishing suite, or similar tools by Mag Plus, Twixel, there are a bunch of them. Uh, the great benefit of 
Adobe's DPS is that they're free to create if you have a Creative Cloud subscription. So these are great options if your content already exists in InDesign and if you have interactivity to add. Um, I've written a good bit about Apple's rejection uh, of DPS apps when they seem to book like and don't have enough interactivity. Apple wants books in the, in the iBook store and not in the App Store. So if you don't have enough interactivity, you most likely will be rejected unless your author is a celebrity or something like that. Um, and if you want more information on that, it's on my website and my blog. Um, this is an example, though, of a DPS app, unfortunately never submitted to the App Store due to a, the museum's lack of funding, but I'm positive it would have been accepted. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more of this later, but this is a beautiful, functional, well-thought-out app, um, and DPS gives you the option of either a portrait or um, horizontal orientation or both, it's your choice, and you have complete control over the layout. The downside, of course, is that it's only available on the iPad. Um, okay, yay, this is my favorite. <laughs> um, iBooks author creates multi-touch iBooks, and I have a love-hate relationship with them. Um, this could be a great format for exhibition catalogs, and also for pho photo books with more text than just captions. And of course, they were iBooks Author was created specifically for textbooks, so it's a great option for art textbooks. The dual orientation option is its greatest asset. You can create a fixed layout in landscape, and the software creates a corresponding portrait layout um, in which all the images are moved over to the sidebar area, and the reader can um, adjust the text size, although not the typeface. Um, <coughs> So doing dual layout restricts your options in landscape somewhat, but it's usually worth it to give your readers this option for a submersive reading of the text. Again, this is restricted to the iPad and now Mac's running the latest system software. However, um, on the Mac you can't view the portrait orientation, only the um, landscape. Inkling I just added about an hour ago to my presentation. <laughs> Because I think that Inkling Habitat is an interesting option for art publishing in the future, but not really right now. Um, this is Black Dog, Black Dog and Leventhal's The Louvre, I misspelled that, The Louvre, all the paintings. Um, and I, this is the web version. When I tried to download this on, to, on my iPad, I just got spinning, 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 spinning. Um, Inkling system is a different way of thinking about books. Everything is set up as cards. Um, and the great thing about it is that it's responsive. It works well, well on the iPhone and on the web browser, if they're not too big. Um, but Inkling has some strict requirements about how things are done. For example, a chapter has to be freely available online. The contents of the book needs to be searchable. And with art books, there are a number of, of rights issues to deal with. And I'm just not sure that art book publishers are ready for this just yet. Fixed layout EPUB. Um, how many times can we say it? It's not a good option for text-heavy books. <laughs> On the other hand, it's a great option for children's books. Um, this is an early one from the Guggenheim. It's really adorable. Uh, but just remember that you can't just take your print PDF and send it to an outsourcer to get a fixed layout EPUB because no one wants to see that the fixed layout EPUB was printed in Germany, because it wasn't. Um, Refillable EPUB. I love EPUB. I read EPUB. Um, but I don't think this is a great option for art books, for most art books. It works best when you have smallish text and fewer images. Um, but a lot of art book publishers right now are creating EPUB templates for essays and um, things that just don't have as much art, which is a great idea. The Guggenheim, for example, has taken essays from some of their larger books and has them for sale on their website for $1.99. That's a great idea. Um, Cooper Hewitt, our National Design Museum, also has a series called Design File that's available that are relatively cheap. I think they're $4.99. Now this is a well-designed EPUB from Abbeville Press, Audubon's Book of uh, Birds of America. And the images are really beautiful. You can see them all at full screen size. It contains um, audio of bird songs for all the birds. It has web links for additional information about all of the birds. Um, unfortunately, it's absolutely huge and slow and lumbering. 
and you get a lot of this, just waiting for the page to load, and I just can't handle it. <laughs> I would not look at this book if I didn't have to. Um, however, birders, I think, have a lot more patience than I do, so <laughs> this is probably a book for them. Um, PDF, is a PDF an ebook? Um, I think so, yes. <laughs> if your backlist exists in PDF and you don't have the time or budget to do anything with it, why not just put it out there? It works for the Getty, it works for the Met. They have gorgeous hardcover print books priced at $50 or more that are available online for free. So what's wrong with that? Um, Met Publications, I believe, has hundreds of them available for free as PDFs. Personally, when I hear about an ebook I want to read, um, and I go to buy it, and I find out it's PDF, I get <coughs> pissed off, and I don't buy it, and that's a lost sale. Uh, but I'm usually buying fiction, and this is an art book. These are art books, and these are free. So it's hard to argue with free. Um, OK, now we're going to look at three specific projects and discuss why they ended up in three different formats. Uh, the first is Odyssey. And I'm only going to say this artist's name once. <laughs> Sai Guozheng is a well-known Chinese gunpowder artist. And uh, MFA Houston gave him an entire room in which to create whatever he wanted. So um, a very smart designer friend of mine created the exhibition catalog for this. And when Adobe DPS was relatively new, she wanted to show off the capabilities of the iPad and of DPS. And so she asked the museum for permission to use the assets from the print book and some video that they had. And uh, so we took a lot of the visual elements and we stripped out almost all of the text. And we have pan and zoom images, galleries, curator's video, a video of the artist at work. Um, we did both horizontal and landscape um, orientations. And I was going to show you this on my iPad, but if you want to see it, come see me later. Uh, there's a panoramic image of the entire room of, with his gunpowder painting. It looks, I think it looks a lot better on the iPad than it does up here. Um, but this is a case where a client came in knowing exactly what she wanted, and um, the way we dealt with the content suited the format perfectly. So I think this turned out beautifully. And I wish it was available in the App Store, but it's not. Project two is African Cosmos for the Monticelli Press and the Smithsonian. My client wanted to reproduce this exhibition catalog in digital, and he suggested a DPS app. Um, but we had been talking about digital formats for quite a while, and I had been telling him about the rejections of DPS apps. And um, so we decided to go with iBooks Author. And he also, he didn't have any, interac inter any interactive content to add. So I steered him away from DPS. Um, he also found the dual orientation option of iBooks Author to be very appealing. So we ended up reproducing only three chapters of the print book, so it would be a, a bit smaller. And of course, it had to be redesigned because uh, this was before fonts could be embedded. And also, since you want to bump up the text for the screen, that means everything has to be relayed out. Um, so we did that. And the client wanted all the images to be zoomable to full screen, which is a great idea. Um, and then in the back, we have a back ad that says, buy the print book. So you have this, I, this uh, iBooks author edition, which is free, just a couple of like preview chapters, and then a link to go out to the store to buy the print book if you want it. So I think that was a good idea. OK, so we're back to PDF. This was a project for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This is a catalog of stone sculpture at the Met from ancient Cyprus. They wanted an interactive PDF for Met publications with buttons on every page to go um, back to contents. And as Anne was saying, the button actually says contents. Co contents. It's not some random gadget, gadget uh, ornament, whatever. And um, so it has the usual bookmarks. The cross-references are all hyperlinked. Um, and unfortunately, we uh, had to produce the interactive PDF at the very same time that we were finishing the print edition. And I don't recommend working like that, because it'll drive you crazy. But um, that's life with the Met. So this is, I believe, going to be um, the first interactive PDF available in Met publications. I'm not sure if it's there yet. We just finished it about a week ago. But these are two pages from it that I think would have worked great in um, iBooks Author or in DPS. As you'll see, there's a head on, um, on the left. 
and it's just they just took four pictures of the head. Um, this would have been great to be one of those 360 spinning, so you could see every angle instead of just four views of it. And on the right, we have a map with um, a selection of the map enlarged at the bottom. This would have been a great interactive map where you could zoom in and, so, and see different sections of the map close up. Um, so basically, the bottom line is what you probably already know, and that is that content is king. Um, in creating digital art books, you have to make sure that your content fits the format, and if it doesn't, you need to either change your format or change your content. And so here are some questions that you can ask clients before you get started. What assets do you have or can you acquire? And if there are no interactive ones, you know, that kind of tells you what to do. What's more important to you, wide distribution or layout control? Um, for most art book publishers, it's definitely layout control. Uh, have rights been acquired to use the images in an ebook? Hopefully they already know that and you don't even have to discuss it with them, but you never know. And what they probably don't think about is have ebook licenses been acquired for the fonts? That's usually a big biggie. Um, and that is pretty much all I have. I'll be happy to answer any questions if I can. Thank you very much.